All right, so at the end of the day, uh, we have this S function over here and two outputs. Uh, you don't have to have two outputs. You, you could have more, you could have less, doesn't really matter. Uh, I'm collecting data off of one temperature pro, just for everybody's information. And the temperature probe I am using is a DS18B20 waterproof temperature sensor. Uh, so this is quite literally the very temperature sensor I bought off of Amazon. So anybody who's interested can just go straight to this webpage. Uh, and no, nobody is funding me. So let's get cracking. Uh, this is the setup on my breadboard at the end of the day. I have a uh, 4.7 kilo ohm resistor if anybody's interested. Here's the ground pin. Here's the DAC pin. And here is the VDD pin. All right, I am connected to Omega. Anybody who has any questions can defer to the schematic here. Uh, finally, uh, we want to go from Arduino to our S function builder. All right, and so what I tried to do here was highlight the one-to-one -one relationship from the Arduino code to the S function builder. So this is Arduino. This is the S function. Okay. Notice how I have sections here. I have one section for the input code. I have another section for the output code, and I have a third section for the discrete or update code. So this discrete or update code gets executed once. This output code gets executed over and over again because it's part of the loop. And this input code stuff up here is quite literally your high level definitions and your libraries and all that jazz. Okay, so uh, defer back to this picture if you need any more information. I will also include this code in the description below. All right, so how do we build it? Well, we know this is our output. Or we know these are our inputs over here. Uh, so let's let's just go back to simulate. Let's stop this. Uh, and we are going to simply minimize this. We are going to create a new function. Or we're going to create a new folder. I'm going to call this probe. Here's the folder. Uh, now what we need to do is we need to get the libraries that we're gonna have to use. So uh, what that means is go to the Arduino libraries, which are found in your documents folder. You had to download this from the web. Uh, so I need Dallas temperature, CPP, and H. I'm going to put that in my folder right here. I'm going to go to one wire. I'm going to get one wire, paste that in there. And the utility, I need these because those are, these H files are also going to be inclusive to the one wire commands. All right, so now I have all the libraries that I need for the moment. So I'm going to simply X out of that. All right, now I'm going to generate a blank Simulink model. And so what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to go down to user defined functions. I'm gonna drag this S function builder in here. And I want a display, where are you? Commonly used, scope, oh. Display right there. All right, well, make sure we're saving this correctly. Now we're going to create our S function. 
So we're going to just call it the name of the temperature sensor. We're going to change this from inherited to discrete. Okay, so notice how we have two outputs down here. Well, we're going to start with one for the moment, just for the sake of an example. And then I'm going to show you how to update this. So we're going to call this temp A. And number of discrete states. We have one. Here's the code. Remember how I said there was sections of code? Here's the input section, or the include section, right there. Here's the output code. Here's the discrete code, or the update code. So now I'm just going to show you what happens when I build this with the TLC wrapper. Notice how one output. Oh, well, this uh, this was supposed to be output, not input. So you have to build that one more time. Do I want to overwrite it? Yes, I do. All right. So now I want to exit out. I want to save those changes. I want to find my wrapper right there. I want to open it. Find anywhere it says void and write extern. Extern C, I should say. Save it. And now we want to rename this from uh, C to CPP. Now I'm going to save this and I'm going to reattach the uh, display. Maximize this. I want to go over to apps. I want to find simulate coder, C code, or you can press control B. Then you want to go to settings. Uh, I have Omega. to yep, change it from continuous to discrete, monitor and tune, that embeds the program into MATLAB and allows me to monitor what's going on in real time. There you go, and it is actually working. So again, folks, this this thing right here is what I'm collecting data with. Now I, I can collect more data off of uh, one DAC pin, but I'm not. So now, like I promised, I am going to stop this, and I am going to add in. Celsius. Okay. So notice how I have one temp. Now I'm going to add one more. Add input. 
Uh, oh, but it's not an input. It is an output. Okay. Sometimes you have to click around in order to save. Okay. Sometimes it's glitchy. And so here is the the code for Celsius. Whoops, made a mistake, forgot semicolon. Notice how that wrapper generated over there. It says it's successful, good. Save this, close that. All right, so now I need to go down here. I need to delete the old wrapper and I need to update the new one. to CPP. Oops. Beautiful, it works. Okay, now uh, now that I know it works, I'm gonna put my hand around it and I'm gonna blow into my hand. <sighs> Wonderful. Now I'm gonna drop it. The temperature should drop here momentarily. There you go. It's dropping. All right, now let's uh, let's go through this. What is this monstrosity? So remember how I said on the left uh, we had our Arduino code, and on the right we had our um, stuff we were putting into our S function. Let me kind of go through this and kind of explain what's happening. All right, so if you run this code as is over here on the left on the Arduino IDE, it'll work. All right, but now the question became, okay, how do I get that into the S function? Well, that was the real question. That was the real research portion of it. So there's this thing called MATLAB MEX file. Basically, that lets you run special code, C code, in MATLAB. I mean, that's, that's pretty much the highest way highest level to put. So anytime you're you're you know you're doing special stuff you need to surround it with MATLAB MEX file otherwise none of your code will run. Alright and notice how I only have certain information boxed in and linked to over here. Well I'm showing you the one-to-one -one relationship. So one wire H and Dallas temperature H I'm showing you where they actually show up over here. This extra stuff right here this this CPP file and this utility one wire direct gpio dot h and utility slash one wire direct reg type dot h were things that were also called by the one wire dot h file but you know i had to go and get this stuff and put it next to the file otherwise the the h file wouldn't run likewise i had to do the same thing with dallas temperature so uh, that's why I had to include both the H and the CPP files. 
All right, now down here, it was pretty straightforward. You're defining the, the pin number that the bus is connected to, and that was pin four. And then you're just calling that one wire, you're just calling that pin number from up here. Okay, and then Dallas, so this is just native code, this and one wire, that's just native to the Dallas temperature uh, commands. You just have to put that in there for the correct functionality. Uh, and please remember, I'm just using only one temperature probe, so that's probably why this is saying and one wire. I'm assuming it would say something else if it was multiple wires. Um, then I end the if statement. I end the MATLAB MEX file if statement. Okay, and then we got this output code section. Basically, this right here is this literally is what I'm permanently looping through for the entire duration of my MATLAB executable. Alright, so notice how I have temp A, and remember how I added temp B, so temp A was Fahrenheit, temp B is Celsius. Okay, so uh, notice how this is sensors.getTempF by index 0. Alright, well that's code that is native to uh, the Dallas temperature thing, the Dallas temperature libraries. Alright, if you go over here you can see sensors uh, sensors dot get temperature f by index zero and above it you can see uh, uh, sensors dot get temperature c by index zero okay so one is Fahrenheit the other is Celsius all right and so as you can see in my example here I'm only calling Fahrenheit but as to, you just saw me do in MATLAB uh, you, it's very easy to add an additional input variable excuse me additional output variable and, and call a different uh, value. All right, and so now down here, this is discrete. This is stuff that happens once. All right, now ask yourself, does this make sense? Well, if I don't declare a variable, it automatically starts at zero. So dx, uh, it, xd, uh, zero not equal to one. Okay, so basically this is saying, Whatever this value is, if it's not equal to 1, run this. Alright. And considering that any value that's not initiated or uh, defined at the very top of your code starts always at 0, uh, this thing is the first thing that's going to run. After you're done with initialization, you, you say, I want to change this from 0 to 1. Alright. And, and that's what allows the code to loop and then only run through this continuously for the the uh, the remainder of your uh, code execution. Uh, and these delays here, these are de these are defined. Uh, by the discrete time step. So notice how you have a delay down here. Well, I don't have delays anywhere in my s function that's because all delays are handled by these discrete time steps which you predefine huh and this serial the serial thing up here uh, is defined by the hardware settings So right here, see these serial port properties? These are the baud rates, okay? Now, I'm not gonna change any of these because I only need 9,600 as a baud rate. I don't need anything more. But if you wanted to change it, you could. You just have to stop, uh, you just have to stop the code from running and go in there and change it. All right. So I mean, at the end of the day, that, that's that's pretty much it. Uh, hopefully this this video was instructional. I know it wasn't my best, but uh, if you liked it, give a thumbs up.